All right. Yeah, yeah. Welcome back <laughs> to the channel. We got a, a, a special edition of the Cool Factor here that I would imagine one day we're going to get get going again. You know, I don't want people to think this is some like some one off, but uh, <laughs> I, I'm laughing at all TW's hand signals <laughs> doing the Hogan and all that. Yeah, the poses, the pose down. I'm digging. <laughs> <laughs> we back, baby. We back. Yeah, I want to step, step on the, the, the toes of the intro. Yes. Uh, I did a pod a couple of weeks ago. And of course, you know, uh, in my comments, all of my comments, oh, you know, when you BQ going to get together again, you know, do you still talk to BQ? You know, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, man, we cool. Um, we live on different coasts. We live on different coasts. I live in Connecticut. BQ just relocated to, to Las Vegas. So, we in different places. We're in different different uh, time zones. So coordinating is tough. But uh, but you know we still link, and you can still catch us in the YouTube chats. Okay, I mean uh, YouTube chats. Catch us in the Twitter chats. You know what I mean. So we still we still out here communicating. We communicating. Yeah, man. We, and we're gonna get it back eventually. But I'm sure I'm sure people are here on the channel are happy to hear you again because I I know just listening to me I can tend to get kind of monotone and boring. And then it, sometimes I record first thing in the morning. I'm stumbling over my words here or there. So TW always brings some some real life to the videos and everything. So the I know, I know it's cocaine. Think that. It's cocaine. Okay, <laughs> it goes back to our Bobby and Whitney conversation we were just having before uh, we hit me the record and Father James here. Mitchell be getting to it. Before we hit record, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was actually watching that pay per view and I didn't think anything of it. Like I saw the spot, and I'm like, "Oh, that's funny," but I just, I didn't think twice of it. Yeah. I didn't know it was gonna. Ah, man, it's that weird. Sucks. It's weird because wrestling is like everyone said, "Well, it's fake, it's entertainment," but then when you do something like that, now it's sports, right? You, you right, know what I mean? Like right. if you're watching a, a TV show or whatever, and there's drugs and there's you know. But now all of a sudden it's it's sports. It's we're well, watching a real I, sport, so we can't. I think the wrestling rests in this very um delicate place where we're of an age now where a lot of the you know it's fake, right? People are kind of, you know, like they're they're getting diluted. There's more and more of us who grew up as wrestling fans who are in positions to make decisions in high places high places like you know networks and and that type of thing so you're so you 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 you're able to get it, your foot in the door more with wrestling so in the case of the nwa that's what we're referencing here the nwa and they had um a relationship or a deal with the cw network cw is trying to grow their sports property like right? they've got acc football they've got a few things here and there They've been doing, they've been trying, they're trying to really dip their toe in with more live sports and wrestling falls under the sports banner, right? Even though whatever, that's a whole nother conversation, but yes, wrestling often falls under the sports banner, right? So they're a brand trying to establish themselves and the NWA, NWA, they took a chance, man. They took a chance. They said, we're going to, we're, we're about to go national. So we're about to do something edgy. We're going to do something you're not going to see on WWE TV. Well, ouch, <laughs> you tried it. You tried it, my friends. You tried it, and it did not work out well for you. Uh, for Unfortunately, horribly unfortunately for you, um, NXT was right there to scoop and score the ball that you fumbled. But, you know, I do – I got to wonder, though, if the CW was, all, was, was, was that close to giving NWA a deal, that tells me that Impact is not shopping for a national a, a different national tv deal i think they're more focused on on trying to grow impact and use it as a vehicle to get access into more markets i saw um i think it was in the impact lounge engagement group somebody uh posted a um a note that access tv is going to go into more markets with comcast uh starting in december and I, I live in Connecticut, and I have Comcast, but I don't have Access TV. So I think that could be a thing that would help out like tremendously, right? Like if you, again, if you are, um, if you get on in you know these major markets, places like the New York City area, right, a very densely populated area, just being on in you know the five boroughs puts you in front of millions. I think 8 million, I think something like 8 million people in what we call New York City. Mm -hmm. So, so getting 
access TV into uh, uh, more markets, I, I think that's actually that could be a good play because again, if you grow, if you have the, um, if you if you have the um, like so so let's say that for impact you want to make more money, right? And we saw it bound for glory. There were sponsorships everywhere. They were all access. I'm sorry. They were all, um, I believe, Anthem Anthem branded sponsorships. But the, what you're still doing is you're showing that we have this space available. And also, if yeah. they're funny marketing, if they're into, you know, a little fuzzy number crunching, what they could be doing is circulating that money throughout the company. They could actually have... Um, access tv and this network and this network that are all all anthem brands they could be actually buying sponsorship in impact which is increasing impacts by bottom line but it's all staying in house you feel me so it'd be like if um it'd be like it'd be like if you had a brand bq t-shirts and you had them buy ad space on the cool factor right like you would be paying out of pocket but you would be paying it to yourself. Right, really? right. So like, mm -hmm. so you're increasing the value of the cool factor because cool factor is making money now and you're also spending your money to pay yourself. So like, so it, again, it sounds, it sounds funny, but don't be surprised if we start hearing, you know, some like quarterly reports or whatever and we hear that, oh, TNA is making more money than ever, right? Right, and right, man. That'll be a big reason why. So, you know, maybe, maybe Scott Demore is uh, not quite stupid. Yeah, maybe, maybe maybe not so much, dude. It, you you know you mentioned the TV, um, the TV aspect. Like a lot of people, I see it all the time on on social media. Well, you can see it on YouTube. Don't, don't you know? It doesn't matter if you don't get the TV channel. Uh, anyone can get YouTube. Like, and I, I've tried to explain to people. People don't actually like watching television on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I I know it sounds weird because you can pull up an app that's for TNT or whatever and watch a show. And it's not that much different, but for whatever reason, like statistically, the numbers have just shown that people don't like long term, uh, long form content on YouTube. Mm. You know, um, it, it's not necessary. They don't necessarily want like super short content like, you know, like some of you get on TikTok. But for television, like people don't enjoy watching YouTube, you know. So I got YouTube TV, for instance, as mm. my cable and I've got my DVR. I just pull up what I want and boom. Mm. To me, that is easier than pulling up YouTube and searching a name and like scrolling through and finding the episode. Like it's not as it's not as convenient as people think that it is. Hmm. Interesting. Y you know. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, I never really actually considered that perspective. I think I, I, that perspective. Um, I work for, you know, a, a, a big network and I have access to some analytics and analytics say that um generationally the younger the younger the audience the more likely they are to watch things on digital so it's 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 like this um you have you have young kids so you know like this is kind of the way i don't know if this, if this is how it is in your house but the way that the story kind of goes is you know at first um like let's say we're trying to answer the question why don't young kids watch live sports as much well because when i was a kid we had just the tv and whatever dad wanted to watch is what everybody had to watch. Well, yeah. Guess what? Now I'm 12. <laughs> I got my own phone. And if dad wants to watch the stinky jets, I'm just going to watch <laughs> Logan Paul on, on YouTube, you know, like, you know, whatever. Yeah. I, don't, I don't have to watch that. And so the trend is, you know, by age group that kids who are younger do tend to watch more and more things on, on apps. And that's why we see them watching on apps because they have, that's what they have control over. Right. Like again, in the sense of like in the household, if daddy wants to watch, you know, the horrible jets, then, you know, I'm going to put on the jets and um, I don't care what you want four year old, leave me alone. But uh, but if they, if that four year old has a tablet, then they're going to watch something on their Disney plus app or on, you know, whatever. So I do think that people like watching things on, on apps. And then I also think back to, cause you know, we're talking about wrestling. So, we got to relate it to a wrestling product. When WWE Network was a thing, I watched it on my phone all the time. You know, I, I think that the, I think this, this always comes back to, because I was actually, I am in the camp of, yes, it would be great 
if Impact slash TNA had more more home market share in their cable deal. But you can't have you can't possibly have more access to people than being on YouTube because everybody has yeah. it in their damn pocket. It's yeah. on you to make them go in their pocket, pull out their phone, and find your product. So that's the way that's the way I think of it in terms of like um you know the whole help yourself type thing, right? Like if WWE had a spat with their their network partners tomorrow and they put their show on YouTube, everyone would find it. Right. Everyone would find it. The you you've said that too. If they were on Access TV, they still do two million viewers. Exactly. 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 I guarantee you, WWE would do two million two million on Access TV. I guarantee it. Because again, that's on now. Again, when you talk about WWE, you have to consider the fact they've been around for so long. They have such an ingrained, you know, market share in people's mind. They are wrestling to to too many people. Yeah. Um. So. Yes, but again, all it comes down to is the fact of like, think about all these wrestling products. Like, think about when NWA Power first launched. Think about all the buzz they had. Oh, they're doing five hundred thousand on YouTube. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, all right. But um, but again, it's on it's on the company, right, to retain that audience, to retain that buzz. Okay, and so that's why you that's why you do things like have somebody decide to snort coke in the middle of your wrestling show. Because mm-hmm. you're just trying to create a buzz. You're trying to get people to go out and do what they got to do to go find your show. You're like, you know what? We're going to the CW. I We're going to be the bad boys of wrestling popping up on the CW. And when you do, <laughs> yikes. So they tried it. They tried it. So I wanted to have you on today because we haven't, with the exception of a little bit of texting, we haven't like talked to deep in it, impact stuff in, in months. And obviously we've got the rebrand going and i've given my thoughts on the whole thing um but let me ask this and really that's really what i want to get into and get like your thoughts on the rebrand what you thought when you first heard it but since we've last spoke not since we last spoke but since we've last reviewed um and it's been a it's been a minute dude i'm trying to think the last time we reviewed anything it's together <laughs> it's <been a> while. <laughs> <laughs> but what have you thought of like the 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 impact product in general in the last we'll just say like you no know, it's been longer than six months that we've done this you know six months to six to ten months yeah you know like uh-huh do, do you um, feel like it's it's you know so okay i gotta say i have actually felt a little bit of relief not having to watch impact every week i know i'm sorry i am sorry i'm sorry impact fans but I, I, I just sorry guys, just playing around sometimes. But um, I so I, I do try to catch it every week. But there's so much, there's so much going on in my job. Football season is the busiest time of the year, and I'm just swamped, and I'm just not able to catch everything every week. So I have been keeping up with Impact, but I haven't been, um, I haven't been watching every second of every episode. Okay. Um, but like, but overall, I think the product has been the same. It's been the same, like no major ups, no major downs, but I will say this. I think that, um, I've really been happy with the increased attendance for shows like what we saw at yeah. Bound for Glory. I thought that looked great. They lit the audience. Well, you know, we, we mentioned all the sponsorship they were showing on the different, uh, platforms around the arena and, and the ring. And so they're doing more to increase the production value. And for those who aren't familiar with the term, pr- production value doesn't necessarily, it, it just means how fancy something looks, right? Like it could cost you nothing to do a motion graphic intro for your, for your, um, for your podcast, but it looks fancy. It looks more fancy than just opening up me saying, welcome to the cool factor. You know what I'm saying? So like, right. So, so, so that's production value and little things like better lighting. That's production value. Um, uh, you know, show, video packages, um, um, lighting, a lighting sequence during somebody's entrance. Like those are production value things. And I think that impact has been making an effort to be better at those things. Video packages have been good. So the product has been good. It's been largely the same. A lot of sameness. And I think yeah. that um, this time last year, 
we were having the conversation about really wanting to see Impact take a step. Uh, I think Scott Demore took over in 2018 or 2019, something like that. And 18, um, I think. Yeah. And, you know, since then, they've taken, you know, they, they've, they've taken steps to slowly bring the name of Impact Wrestling back into respectability. And I think we, as the, as the, the diehard fans who watch it all the time, we felt that they should have just, we've wanted to see an increase, but I, but in all fairness, I don't know that the uh, returns have, have supported that they should be increasing. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, yeah. like they can, like, so to me, in my, in my opinion, it's, it's problematic to go do two nights in the same venue and expect two sellout crowds. Like that's, that's very tough to expect. Yeah. Um, but, but more and more, they've been doing very well in those, you know, in those venues for two nights in a row. So I think they're at a place now where I'm not going to say it's now or never, but if you're not going to take a big swing as far as like trying to play bigger venues, then when are you going to do it? But I'm right. glad that it's also coming along with, you know, this news that dropped a few months ago about them. Um, you know, uh, if you've noticed the way the shows have been, they're doing a lot of a lot of one off type things. Right. Like they did the UK tour stuff, which looked horrible. That stuff looked really it looked that the UK the UK tour footage looked about as bad as when Impact used to post on Twitch. Right, right. Basically broadcasting from somebody's phone. That's how good the UK tour footage looked. And I'm just like, man, you gotta do better than this. Like you can't come with the the uh the announcement that we're gonna um raise our production value from the entrance ramp to the ring ropes and then when we see this UK tour, it looks like, you know, you're filming out of somebody's phone, you know, yeah. like, so, so I get it. This is, and, and so I think, I think that we are all just continually like biting our lip, like, okay, we believe you this. Yeah. This is going to get better. We sure believe it, <laughs> but it's like, yeah, I, it's almost like being a Jets fan. Right, like <laughs> you're telling me, you're telling me Zach Wilson looks good in practice, and then I show up on on game day, and I'm like, oh yeah, uh, he's gonna do better, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. And so, um, and so, so that's kind of what it is. Like, I um, I've been following the product, um, and it's very much the same. It's yeah. very much the same. So, you know, the 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 announcement promises more, right? And right. That's, that's why we're here because they and promised us more. And I'm glad you brought up the, the production value thing because it was the news came out several months ago. Hey, we're going to increase production value, but no one knew what that meant. And I think you broke it down in a way that makes a lot of sense because even when I heard the news, I said, I don't know if that means software. I don't know if that means hardware. I don't know if that means personnel. You know, there, there's, you know, but, but you're right. You know, it is sometimes just doing a flash intro and it is, it's changing the lighting because my concern was, with production value, a lot, a lot of it's very inexpensive to do. It just, they just weren't doing it. Um, mm -hmm. And it's mainly what like the backstage stuff, you know, I've explained with lighting before, like I've got a light on me right now. It is not shining directly on my face because then I'll going to look completely washed out. Like you have to have uh, various angles and stuff that you use lighting. Right. And when they do like the backstage se segments with Gia, it's just a light just shining directly on her face. You know, and I'm just like, these are little things that mm. you can, uh, it, it does not cost money. It just, it's just putting good people in, in, in the right places with experience and, you know, so. so the, right. These are the things that I, I wish that, um, I wish that the, uh, the press conference that Scott Demore did with Tom Hannafin, I wish that he was taking. I'm not going to say real questions from real media because I know that Mike Johnson, PW Insider, was in there, and I've been saying for years that he is the voice, the insider voice I trust on Impact slash TNA uh, rumors more than anybody else. I think I think I think that he's earned that because of in the LOL TNA days, I thought he always covered uh, Impact with a, a good degree of objectivity, and mm -hmm. I, so I think he's I think he's kind of earned um, uh, credibility. On matters related to impact, and he was he was in there 
right? And he was asking questions. They gave, they, they gave him the, the big press release story before they actually did the interview with, um, with, with Scott DeMore and Tom Hannafin. So, um, so I'm not going to say that, that, that there wasn't real media in there, but I feel like if you're going to, you know, take questions, like WWE has, in a very short time, mastered the art of the media scrum. And by the way, I, um, I've, this is something I thought Impact should do for years. Like, it, all the way back in all the LOL TNA days, I would always just say to myself, if all, these, if all these dirt sheet writers hate you, why don't you just invite them to your shows, give them access to, like, a press conference, you create content for them, and yeah. they'll start covering you more favorably. Like, to me, it seemed like a, like a, like a simple, easy thing to do. Um, and, again, WWE... They've started allowing, um, you know, what we call UGC, user-generated content, right, to come from, like, all these people. You got, like, um, you know, ABC, XYZ podcast getting a press credential to come out and be in the media scrum and interview Triple H, right, after after every pay-per-view. And what is it doing? It's creating positive press because... This is not a big press release from NBC, but it's from, you know, a very popular uh, wrestling account that is in the conversation on Twitter, right? And so, like, this is something I thought Impact should have done a long time ago. And they had an opportunity to do this here, and they didn't do it. They had certain questions that they picked out that people had sent in that they chose to answer. And Scott Demore is very good. He's very charismatic, and he's, he's got all the talking points down. But I would have loved to have asked him some real questions. Like, right. what does it mean when you say you're going to be an agent for change in 2024? What does that look like? Because in 2002, you guys came out with the X Division, and that was innovative because it took the cruiserweights from WCW, and it gave them basically feature spots on a program where before they had been like kind of relegated to this, this little uh, sideshow <laughs> type of role. But now you're giving them a feature role. So, yes, that was innovative, okay? But it's 2024. I'm asking, I want to know, what does it look like to be innovative for the wrestling business in 2024? Uh, you mentioned this in your pod that you did about the fact that TNA has a real opportunity, one that probably will not exist for, it will, it will again eventually, but not for a long time. They have a very real opportunity to make a major move because AEW to be the alternative is what you're yes you're yes, getting at yes that's that's what I'm getting at because and, and Scott Demore even said this in his press conference with Tom Hannafin and he didn't he didn't take a shot at AEW but I took it as that because he said he said look he said no disrespect to anybody but I think we're good at what we do and we're coming and and I love that you know what I mean I love that because you know AEW is the number two but it's not like they've run away with that spot. You know, it's not like they have taken that spot and grown their fan base and added new fans. They've pretty much said, if you like our shit, then cool, because this is what we're going to do. We're going to do what we do over and over and over and over and over again. Oh, you're getting tired of it? Where are you going? Right? And that's kind of that's kind of what's going on with AEW now, right? Yeah. And so there is some real opportunity for a new brand to come in or an old brand we haven't seen in a while to come back into the public consciousness and attract some new fans but my question is how what's the plan you're going to have some buzz because people are going to want to see what is the new what is the, what is the new show going to look like what is what are the new belts going to look like right like there, there's going to be some things that are going to create some buzz create some conversation but like what's the plan like you know that, that, that's what i want to know because even just looking at this announcement right the announcement was great it generated largely positive buzz but like at this point, that was like two weeks ago, and like we're like, okay, what's next? You know, what are we gonna right? Do? And I saw when they when they announced, okay, we're going to be TNA again. I saw a lot of people, heard a lot of people say, well, what's different this time? Why is it? Why is it different? Like, think, what did they do last time they rebranded as Impact? It was largely rushed. It was. Uh, Bruce Pritchard in a ring. They had belts that were Global Force Wrestling with a Impact placard on them. <laughs> um, it was a complete mess. Like there was no plan. Compared to this, there's a plan. Like this is not the same. I, I, it's crazy that people are are trying to uh, 
to compare it to when they turned from TNA to Impact. I was like, that was a complete mess. Um, so but you, let, let me let me let me just interject on that just a little bit. Like yeah. I, I don't, I'm never gonna be insider guy. Never gonna be insider guy. But I can just tell you, <clears throat> and everybody who works out, everybody out there from from something that I was doing that was covering a wrestling um covering some wrestling stuff um i can tell you that whether dixie and scott demore and all the people involved knew it or not there was a plan for tna wrestling to become global force wrestling and it was and it was it was put into motion faster than anybody could recognize it right. um and, and like it just it wasn't it wasn't done well uh this was like this was jeff jarrett's plan from the time he showed back up uh on on tna wrestling um he he i think he planned on doing um what's the word like uh like an insider takeover or whatever um mm -hmm. so what happened was i was i was um doing some work for a particular uh, for a particular promotion, uh, not promotion, I'm sorry, for a particular uh, outlet. And um, the communication was going to XYZ at globalforcewrestling.com. And I was like, hmm. So before the public had any designs on it or plans of it uh, at all, or, or excuse me, or in information on it at all, the plan was already in place to do a changeover. And matter of fact, do you remember that big um that big bound for glory where they basically tried to unify all the TNA and GFW titles? Um that was supposed to be writing TNA off, right? Like like for storyline purposes, that was supposed to be the day like TNA and GFW came together, they had a fight and gfw won and now gfw ru rules everything that that was that was the way they tried to do it for like storyline purposes without saying it right yeah um and then as we all know jeff jarrett you know for personal reasons was out of that spot faster than he could <laughs> he was out of that seat faster than he could sit in it um and then you know and and then anthem was scrambling right anthem was scrambling and they just needed to find some sort of stability right remember that episode where uh loki was having a, a an exchange with somebody in the ring and he was like this is global force <laughs> and I, was like, I was like god like what a moment in time man uh you remember when james Storm was the episode where james storm had all the people in the impact zone get it. everyone stand up, stand up, say G F W G. He started like ch chanting. It was I like don't remember that, but I believe that it happened. Cringe. It, yeah. So, so they tried it, right? They tried it. Yeah. Um. And and I think the thing about like the impact branding, right, is like it was like impact was like um was like Eddie Edwards. It was like Eric Young. It was that the little bit of stability you needed. Remember during the pandemic when they had the um excuse me they had like the five-way match and then eddie edwards ended up coming out with the world title and i was like you know yeah. what they just needed some stability this was after yeah. the tessa blanchard debacle and you know again it was like the pandemic and it was like i was like you know what they just needed some stability that's a guy they know is going to be here and the same thing with with the name impact right tna became impact wrestling through lawsuits failed corporate takeovers like all of the deal all of it um and then they just needed some sort of stability so the th the one thing that was constant was this program was called impact from yeah. 2008 i think on and so nope we're we're just we're just we're impact wrestling we're impact wrestling uh because some other stuff is currently held up in court and we're impact wrestling now so that's right. all you need to know and like and so that, that that's what it was. And I think in the grand scheme of things, right? Scott Demore came in and they did they they established stability. They they were able to turn the roster over multiple times. Um again, they took some big swings with like the Tessa Blanchard thing, the 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 repairing of the relationship with New Japan. Um, you know, like uh, the bringing in Kenny Omega, like they have taken some big swings and all that stuff 
has served just to make them a part of the conversation that's not attached to an LOL, right? Yeah. And so if that's step, I don't know if that's step one or step three, right? But um, but now it's time for the next step, right? And so that's that, that's where we are. So you made a point. Um, and we talked about this a little bit before we started recording, where they made the announcement, the buzz, the buzz was largely positive. And here we are a month later and it's, and there's still buzz there, but it's more fan generated. And I, this is something I brought up on my last podcast was that it didn't, does not appear that there was a content calendar in place. Um, and that's something in the social media world, you create a content calendar, all your favorite YouTube tubers who are really, really consistent have this, Hey, um, they plan out a, a, a month ahead of time, you know, Tuesday and Thursday, Tuesday and Thursday, Tuesday and Thursday, every, you know, we're going to do this and this and this. And it just does not feel like they, they capitalize on the announcement. Like it, it just, it seemed like there should have been something in place. Like, okay, we're going to hit them with this. Um, I would, I would even debut one of the damn belts, not all of them. They, mm. they clearly want to do it at the pay-per-view, but, it, but it's just, I, I so I watched this last episode of Impact, and I haven't even made it all the way through yet. I have to review the show, and I was so bored within 20 minutes because it was just the impact that I want them to get away from, and I'm <laughs> so excited about what they're gonna do um, that I was really struggling to get through this episode. But my my point was to circle back is that they made the announcement, but there hasn't been. How do we capitalize it? What, what's the next you know, smaller announcement that we make that gets people excited and moving forward. Like they're just allowing the fans to create the buzz and the buzz is still there, but they just haven't. It's like, we hit you with the announcement. Okay. And now wait three months until we rebrand. Right. It just doesn't seem like there's, there's a plan to get them, you know, it, they're just, they're delivering the UK stuff, which was not very good. Like I said, this last episode of Impact, I was bored to freaking tears through it, you know. But you, so you get what I'm trying to say here, though, that th there's just nothing to keep keep the ball rolling. Yeah. So I uh, I, I hadn't finished this episode of Impact yet. I got a couple of episodes, a couple of minutes into it. I really liked the uh, Deanna Perrazzo, um Tasha Steele's match. Um, Deanna has been doing a lot of jobs lately, but I think that uh you know and a lot of people are, are speculating that that means she's on the way out it could um or it could mean that you know that she's just trying to help the division get a little bit stronger so she actually has some people to beat right if you keep beating everybody nobody matters because nobody can beat you right <coughs> roman reigns um and so <laughs> the uh, so so I, it, it could mean she's on the way out um i don't know you know i think that's another conversation we can have for another day uh but I, I saw I've been seeing some clips because, you know, Impact, they circulate all the major the major development clips like on their social media. Um, apparently, Myron Reed uh, from MLW is going to be with uh, 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 Wentz and, and Trey Miguel now, and he's going to be part of the Rascals. That looks interesting. So I haven't finished the episode, but I think there's some stuff there to, to take away. These are the second set of tapings from Bound for Glory. Um, so they went straight into the UK stuff. Then they're going to do this. Then that should get us to the uh, the IPWF. <laughs> Boy, man. Yo, Impact really knows how to make you wish for the year to be over. <laughs> dude, oh, dude, every year, every year they, they, they call it a year after Bound for Glory. It's completely phoned in the rest of the year. Yeah, they should. Um, you know what? Uh, there was recently an announcement by uh, Tony Khan that AEW is introducing a tournament. And I have been asking for Impact to bring back the Bound for Glory series for the longest time. I thought yeah. it was so much fun. Like, again, to me, it's a plot device, right? Like, it just, it tournaments create your story for you. So you have, like, if you know you want to get to, you know, uh, Moose versus Alex Shelley at Bound for Glory, well, cool. Like, let's do a tournament. Let's do a tournament that plays out week over week over week. And our story is, and you can put stories within the tournament. Right. And then to get to your ultimate winner. And now by the time you get to the, to the championship match, this um, this person who has won the tournament, they have credibility because they beat a bunch of people. Right. So um, I'm a big fan of, of, of tournaments. And I think there's 
That's that's one of the things impact could do. So we don't have to have these lulls where it's like, okay, we're just waiting to get to this thing we know is three months down the line. Um, yeah. what's coming next? Yeah, and those are the things I want to see them bring back. I don't really want to see them bring back old TNA stars. I don't care about that. Right. I, I prefer that they don't, to be honest. But there were so many concepts that they had, Bound for Glory series being one of them, that just I don't know. The fans have been asking for that for a long time. So hopefully, hopefully they do. I like a tournament where you don't know. Like there's not an AEW tournament who you don't know who's going to be in the finals once they announce the brackets. It's right. every single time. <laughs> or or like you know there'll be eight wrestlers in a tournament but only two are involved in a storyline and right. then they meet in the like you always know it's coming mm-hmm. so i like yeah i like a tournament where it's more um you don't know what's going to happen and this aw one's supposed to be like a round robin tournament so I, I would imagine it's similar to like what the bound for glory series was mm. um so wait so round be, robin that means everybody kind of fights each other to wrestle like, each other yeah mm, okay okay yeah i think like, that's cool yeah so it yeah, so that was awful. the point. Is that when I saw when I saw this AEW announcement, I was like, "It's the Bound for Glory series, you bastard!" Like, yeah. really, everybody's gonna say it's the G one. But before I knew what the G one was, I saw the Bound for Glory series, and that's the thing that people have to um, like make space for. Like, you gotta realize, and again, this is where I think AEW really screws up. Is there's a whole audience here. Sometimes you gotta ignore loud internet wrestling fans. Because that's not Mm -hmm. everybody. Like, there's somebody who just watches your show. There's somebody out there who just watches Dynamite. And there's there's a kid out there who just watches Dynamite. And, like, and the thing is, you got, if you want this kid to know that Kenoste Takeshja is a big deal, you got to show this kid something to explain why Takeshja is a big deal. Don't just be like, oh, you you need to go do your research. That's stupid. <laughs> God, that's stupid. That is the stupidest thing that circulates among wrestling fans. You shouldn't. What show? Do, do you does NFL say, okay, hey, uh, you need you need to come watch this game between um uh, between the Chargers and the Edmonton Eskimos. And if you don't know who the Edmonton Eskimos are, then you need to go do your research. Do your homework. What? Yeah. No. You're going to tell me why I should why I should give a damn to watch the Chargers versus the Edmonton Eskimos. Right? Like that that's 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 ah, sorry. You just got me on a little tangent. But that's one thing <laughs> AEW does with their like and but by by the way, that's why there is an opening for a, a brand to come in and bring in all these fans who are who are um a little jaded with WWE, not quite impressed with AEW, okay? They're there. They are these people are there. And, but what you got to do is you got to bring something that's unique. You got to yeah. bring something that's not AEW, that's not WWE. You got to have um a group of talent that's not on AEW, that's not on WWE that I can't just go to my local high school gym and see this weekend. That would help. Yeah. OK, but, you know, so so there's a lot of things out there that can be done. Will they do them? We'll see. So what was your reaction? Um, it, I don't want to say it was spoiled for me because it was the night before my wedding bound for glory. So I didn't get to see it live and I didn't see any results online, but I had multiple people message me like, oh, it's TNA. So I that was ruined for me a little bit. So I didn't get that initial reaction that everybody else got to have but what what did um what did you think when it happened because i saw i saw the wrestling fans excited but i heard a lot of podcasters uh being the ones taking having the more negative of megan excuse me more negative view on it yeah my (laughs) my initial reaction was why 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 do this like because you know if you remember the conversation we've been having about all the retro tna stuff i've been saying that i thought that the perfect thing to do is once a year maybe slam anniversary go full tna go six-sided ring go tna sets you know whatever i would even i've even said they should get rid of the x division championship bring in the old tna belt and make it the total non-stop action championship and um you know like because i you know going on my rant a hundred times about what the hell is the x division in 2020 23 24 right um 
So I've so so I've been of the position of like why you need to be moving this company forward, not moving the company backwards. But 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 you also can't deny the numbers and the excitement that was generated for the Impact 1000 show for yeah. all of the TNA rebrand stuff that's that circulated that stuff has been more in the mainstream conversation than anything else anything. that Impact has done and so you can't deny that there is an appetite for TNA TNA content TNA related content however you want to say it and a lot of the times when i was hearing uh people refer to impact as tna like in like so for example if they were to say oh uh mickey james uh fought tasha Steeles on tna like i would always feel like it was done in like a dismissive type of way right right to say like i don't even recognize i i don't the impact doesn't reserve the, the respect to be called anything but what it used to be which was this thing that used to get laughed at right so so the name all all that goes in to one one fact which is that the name tna has never gone away right the name tna has never gone away and the, here's another thing that i've said for a long time is that the day that tna died was whatever that day was in july that the tweet came out that spike tv was canceling impact wrestling that mm -hmm. that to me was the realization of the doom and gloom that the dirt sheets had been preaching for TNA for years. That was it. It was downhill from there. All raps, all rats need to jump this ship. Okay. That's what it was at that time. But that was in like 2013. Okay. That was that was 10 years ago. There's an eight-year-old fan who never knew that existed. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's a there, there there's an eight-year-old fan, there's a nine-year-old fan who has no idea that existed. There's a 10-year-old fan who has no idea that ever existed. And that needs to be your target. I say this all the time when I have conversations about um, uh, the, the WWE and the Cody Rhodes thing, right? Like those of us who understand, um, who, who, who watched Cody Rhodes when he was stardust and he was in WWE before, we thought absolutely this is a great time for him to dethrone Roman Reigns and win the WWE Championship and whatever, finish the story, right? But they decided not to do that. And I'm not saying it was necessarily the wrong choice, but I didn't think they could ever make it a bigger deal than they than it would have been had they it done it been. last last April. Yeah. I was wrong. And I'm and I'm happy to admit that I was wrong. And this is why WWE gets this shit right all the time. Because they're not booking for me. They're not booking for 40 plus year old me. They're booking for that eight-year-old fan who just met Cody Rhodes last year. They're, my kids are five and seven. They can watch WWE and know that Cody is the man. Not because he was stardust. Not because he ventured out on his own, said, F WWE, I'm going to go do the indies and build my name myself. Like Not, not because of that. Because when he pops up on, on Monday Night Raw... He's got the, the smoke and the entrance, and he comes out. He's got the, the suits and the smile, and he's presented like a big deal. They got it right. My kids are going to watch this year and a half that Cody's having now when they see him as the champion, when he finally defeats the great Roman Reigns, right? Like that, like that, 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 that's the thing that TNA has to do. Stop booking for the dirt sheets. Stop mm -hmm. it. Stop booking. To, for the naysayers, right? The reverse battle royal people. Stop booking for them. Find book for that fan who's going to be turning on your show, seeing wrestling for the first time. Book for that fan who is going to be turning on your show, seeing wrestling for the first time, not WWE. Book for that fan. Okay? Book for them. I'm a hardcore fan. I'm going to watch no matter what. I watched Lucha Underground. I watched WoW Superheroes. I, I watched ROH for a couple of days when it was on Destination America. I, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a hardcore. I watch just about anything. Don't book for me. I'm going to be here no matter what. Book for the fan of the future. That is how you move uh, not only the wrestling industry forward, but the the but for TNA that's how you that's how you move TNA forward. You got all these people now telling their stories about how when they were a kid they saw TNA wrestling and that 
inspired them to go on and become wrestlers. Like that's the story they've been telling with like Will Ospreay and like all this other stuff. But that's what you got to do. You got to book for the next generation. Stop booking for the current fan for the dirt sheets. Book for the fan who's still going to be here in 10, 15, 20 years. That should be your target audience. Well, I, I always use the the percentages of you want to do about 70% for the people who are who are down, who are gonna watch no matter what. That and then there's that 30 where you gotta you gotta take a swing and you gotta do something different. If you if it becomes 70% of trying to take swings and then only 30 is for the people who are loyal, then you're gonna turn upside down like what AEW is going through right now. You know, so I, I mean, um, you know, I don't I don't see I don't agree. I would argue. I would argue that AEW does it the way you just said. I think they book mostly for that fan who's going to be there no matter what. I think most of what they do is still booking for that fan who loved Roderick Strong and ROH. I think most of what they do is still booking for that fan that loves every little dirt sheet reference that comes out of MJF's mouth. They need to find a way to get the fan who has no idea who El De Hijo De Vikingo is. They need to find a way to get that fan. If you know you got something crazy dope in Vikingo when he comes on the TV, you need to find a way to make me sit here and watch this and be wowed when it happens. But don't tell me this is a dream match. Whose dream match? Okay? <laughs> like, that's the thing, right? For that, for that, for, for your hardcores, yes, this maybe this is a dream match for them. But most of us have no idea who the hell this guy is. So right. I think it's probably the other way around because the, the uh, the hardcores, we're the ones who are going to shell out that money for the pay per view. We're the ones who are going to buy the plane tickets and fly all over the country to come to your show, right? We're the ones buying the thousand dollar packages for WrestleMania. We're the hardcores. We're going to be there no matter what. But you get media in the building because social media star Logan Paul is here and he's going to do a flip. Okay, like that's the that's how you get more, more people in. And I'm not saying go be WWE. I'm not saying try to copy what WWE does. I'm just saying that um, if if the people who attend indie wrestling shows were the pathway to being a huge company, MLW would be a huge company. Yeah. Do you think they will ever get away from this like formula right now where it's let's bring someone in because AW is doing it? But TNA has the history of doing it for a lot longer, bringing in someone in because they were a recognizable name in WWE, bring them in, put the belt on them. Kind of like they did with Trinity, did it with the Good Brothers. Do you think they're ever going to get away from, from that? Uh, because that's, that's kind of what we're talking about with creating an alternative, really investing in your guys or really investing in trying to create the new star. Or they're always going to be like, oh, but this guy's got a bigger name. We got to, you know. I think you got to fish for eyeballs. I think you, um, from from a business standpoint, because you asked me if they will. And I think right now the answer is no. Um, but I think, um, and I'm sure, and, and the answer is to why I think the answer is no. Not what I think they should do. But what I think they will do is I think they will, they will go with what the eyeballs want to see, right? And Trinity had a visible impact, no pun intended, on business, right? Oh, uh, yeah. She had a visible impact on 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 impressions, right? So when you have somebody like that, yes, you feature them. You feature them and you, you know, you make them look big and strong, right? Like, yes, you do you do that. And so I I don't so if they get a chance to get a hold of somebody with a big name from WWE, um, yeah, no, I think they will continue to do that. Uh I, personally Again, I think for the sake of building up your brand, I think they should have an internal list of untouchables. This is what AEW does, right? Like they have a list of untouchables. You're yeah. not um if you're if you're first day in from WWE, you're not beating Kenny Omega. You're not beating MJF. You're probably not beating the Young Bucks, right? Like you're uh the you, they, they have an internal list of untouchables. And I think Impact, uh, TNA should have that, right? Like, you should have your internal list of untouchables. So it's like, um, I don't know, if if somebody shakes free from WWE, like somebody who's not, uh, let's just let's just say like, a, 
I don't know. Like th- there's this this huge, you know, like if Randy Orton were to shake free, you let Randy Orton do whatever the fuck he wants because he's yeah, Randy yeah, Orton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but like if you if you're able to get, I don't know, like a, a Damian Priest or somebody who's like a mid card, you know, somebody like that. Yes, you don't bring that person in. I don't think it's smart to bring that person in and put them at the top of your roster right away. You know, I think the smart thing to do with that person is bring them in, let them work their way up and lose to Josh Alexander. Um, yeah. Now, you see, they are bending over backwards and twisting themselves in a pretzel trying to woo Will well, Ospreay yeah. to, uh, to, yeah. to come to, to exactly impact. Exactly where you were, yeah. And I don't, I, I don't think he's going to go because I think, you know, Will Ospreay is aware that, you know, his bump card is limited. And it, listen, if you are a professional wrestler, um, and you have an opportunity to perform in WWE, you should take that opportunity to perform in WWE. Like, there's no other promotion in the world that's going to put you on a stage like that. None. Not New Japan, not AEW, nobody. Nobody's going to put you on the same stage. You know, um, I would just, just, think, just think about any WrestleMania stage. You know, yeah. the amount of media that's there. You know, the just people- look at the difference of Jake Cargill. Just yes. AEW and then in uh, one week in WWE and she's infinitely yeah. a bigger star. Absolutely. That, that, that's it right there. That's it right there. So why would you even want to, it's, it, you know, again, there's lots of places you can go work and make a living, but to be a star, WWE will make you a star, like a real, not a wrestling star, a star. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. The, you mentioned, um, a list of untouchables and that's like essentially who they got will osprey running through right now you know right <laughs> they just come exactly in and, exactly yeah. and that's the that, that, like, that's what Im- impact they, they don't have right like you would think josh alexander was their untouchable and he just had will osprey beat them like man oh to me i just i find it i find it gross not that will osprey is not worthy of beating josh alexander but i just think that protect somebody man Mm-hmm. Because what you what you're doing is you're protecting for the fans. You're protecting that hey, our top guy is as good as anybody else's top guy, and you never fucking do that, man. Scott Demore, you never protect impact top uh, a top impact guy. Like yeah. you had every impact player bend over for for fucking uh, uh, Kenny what's Omega. His name? Kenny Omega. Yes, my God, ugh. Yeah, and they they didn't even. Like we we talk, we've talked many times about Rich Swan and Kenny Omega, they didn't even make that competitive for him. They they at no point, even the match itself, you never felt like he might win this. Right. There, were, no there wasn't point. a point. It was a good match, but there was no point during no. it. You know, um, same with Sammy Callahan wrestled him. Maybe Moose, but we knew he wasn't going to win. Also, but right. Yeah, they just they're feeding their dudes. <laughs> mm-hmm. these other guys Crazy. and then then there's no payoff like what's the payoff of will loss right now and that's that's the thing the no payoff right yeah i would have been okay with all of that had kenny omega done a job for josh alexander yeah which he is probably what have. they were trying to supposed to do i'm sure that's but tony khan said fuck you that's not gonna happen <laughs> i mean like, yeah, but he he's like oh, i'd rather have i'd rather have i'd rather have kenny omega drop this belt to christian who can drop it to your impact guy? Like yeah. what a what a dick! What <laughs> a dick! And I was, uh, to me, I'm just like, um, if you're Scott Demore, why would you agree to that? You know? Yeah. Like why 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 would you agree to that? Because winning that title off Christian is not even close to winning it off Kenny Omega. Not even close. Not even close. Yep. Not not same ballpark. Not same neighborhood. Not same game. Okay. And Christian didn't even beat him clean for it. He, did he? I, no, he didn't. Yeah, 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 there was definitely some fuck shit that went on. He, he um, um, kill switched him onto a chair. Yeah, crazy. So crazy. It was just like, you know, it'd be one thing if he got that clean win. It like, eh, you know, but. So add that to the list of things that TNA needs to do. Protect the brand. Protect yeah. the brand. I can guarantee Moose is going to win. At hard to kill. Think so? Because I talk about this a lot that Scott Demore stays the course at all times. There's like very little deviation. You can just see that on screen. Um kind of like when, when at Bound for Glory, he Will Osprey took on Mike Bailey. Well, he was supposed to wrestle Mike Bailey six months ago, but he got hurt. So we're gonna do the match. And it's gonna be the first time you see Will Ospreay in impact or in this version of it. 
So they went to Mike Bailey. They did. Um, I bring up Rich Swan too. Like he got, they were kind of giving him the Kofi Kingston push for a little bit. Mm. He got hurt. And then when he came back, just they had him win the world title cold, ice cold. Mm. And it just <laughs> didn't really get over when he did it because it wasn't organic anymore. Every yeah. time um, he's got a plan, like he sees it through. And two years ago when, I mean, they just brought up that they were possibly going to rebrand a TNA during the pandemic, but it threw things off. Remember, Moose had the TNA title at that time. Right. He, they said, oh, well, he found it in the back. He was supposed to win it in a King of the Mountain match. Oh. And, you know, but they, never, they never had that show. Oh. So, and, and he was supposed to be, you know what I mean? He was supposed to be the guy back then. Now, oh. he wins it in Feast or Fired. Wow. They're going right back to the storyline they had three years ago. And he's going to be the dude. I believe you. I, I would, because my, my question was, what's the course he stay, he's getting back on? But what you're saying makes sense. Yeah. What you're saying makes sense. I, um, oh, shoot. I, I mean, like, to me, in my mind, that leads us right back to Moose and Josh Alexander. And I'm like, okay, we saw that. But I, I don't. I don't have a rebuttal as to why they wouldn't do what you just said, right? Yeah. Like I can't, I can't see any reason to say they're not going to do that. Why? Why? They, why would they? Also, they? Right, and they also just re-signed him to this big contract. And I said oh, the same did? thing when Jordan Grace re-signed. I was like, she's going to win the Call Your Shot Gauntlet. Like you don't mm. just come in and you know, hey, we convinced you to not go here without mm. some kind of big promise of, right away. But did they convince her not going? I, I think Jordan Grace is an interesting conversation. I, I look at a lot of these people, and I don't mean that they don't have value. But, you know, Jim Ross would always say that uh, wrestler frustrations come down to two things, creative and cash, right? So that is to say that if you can get a similar deal from Impact that you would get from AEW, but you're going to be used in a way better situation creatively, is it worth taking a little less to be an impact and actually still feel creatively fulfilled? Or is it, um, you know, because again, like if you're Jordan Grace and you go take, you know, more money to be in AEW, but they got you, you know, dicking around on Rampage. Doing what Ty Valkyrie's doing right and, now. Yes, yes. Do it. What is Ty Valkyrie doing right now? You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, so, you know, again, so... You know, I think that I think that that to me that's an interesting conversation, and that's why I don't think that in a bid that it's necessarily a no-brainer to go to AEW. Like, if you're Kiara Hogan, you weren't doing anything on Impact, and you go to AEW, you're not doing anything, but you're doing it in front of seven thousand people instead of seventy people. Then, yeah, hell yeah, that's an upgrade. Do it. But like again, if you're Jordan Grace and you're a, a main eventer building uh, a Hall of Fame legacy in this particular company. And now you're going to go have a face off with Chris Statlander, lose to Chris Statlander and never be seen again. You know what I mean? Or until you're doing some shit on ROH, you know, like, or, or they throw you in a battle Royal or something like, is that worth it? I, I don't know if that's the conversation that she's had. But I'm just saying that based off the fact of the way we see women's women used on AEW yeah. television, like, like what Tony storm is doing is amazing. Yeah. She, is so good but from a lot of what we've seen of AEW behind the scenes there's a lot of being asked to create your own your own your own story and what tony storm has done is she's already a phenomenal wrestler right she's already she's already excellent with, with all of that but she has created this character that has its own story and its own story arc and in a tv show where so many people look like they are just winging it she looks like she has a real story arc yeah. and it's a character that you can follow and she says funny things and you know what i mean like she's interesting tv on a tv show that's rarely interesting and so like so and and by the way that's a credit to wwe i, I think because in wwe you learn things like that right like you you learn yeah. how to just do some wild shit because it might get over and that's why i think that you know this stigma of um of of not signing ex WWE guys that shit got to go away because WWE is the train the best training ground you can get for how to be a professional wrestler you're right like, you're right when i when i see like all these people um 
who are like getting released. I'm like, man, like I just I hope. And I think um uh Matt Cardona he posted like this big note to a bunch of people when they got released. It's like, yo, dog, like you know, I know it's like crushing that you didn't achieve your dream of 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 uh of of main eventing WrestleMania, but like you just got the best training you can get to be a professional wrestler. You got to see this operate at the highest level. You got to see it. So now go develop, go develop, go see what you can make out of this. And that's what we're seeing with Tony Storm, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't get that. So I said all that just to say that I don't know that if you're Moose or if you're Jordan Grace or if you're even Deanna Perrazzo, that going to AEW is all it's cracked up to be. Because they're gonna find they're gonna they're gonna give you a big flashy debut, right? It's gonna be a major announcement, yeah. or the lights are gonna go out, or you know what I mean? Like AEW's got like three ways they de debut people, and you're gonna do it. You're gonna have a match with somebody they think is important, and then we're never gonna see you again, more than likely, right? Yeah. Or they're gonna throw you in some group, and so, so I don't know that you know for some of those people that AEW is as, as appealing as you know as it as it seems like it might be. And you know why Kiera Hogan left, and Kiera Hogan even get the All Elite graphic, as a matter of fact. But mm. the reason she left is because she said on a podcast, I don't remember which I, what I was listening to, that they weren't going to put her in a program for the Knockouts title. She said, I've been there how many years? How many times am I going to wrestle for the Knockouts Tag Team Championship? She's like, I never had a one-on-one -on -one match for the Knockouts title. I right. think I think she might have had like a bullshit um match versus chelsea green is like a jobber or something like that mm -hmm. um or laurel van s i should say but they never had her in a program for the title so she's like and you're talking about creative like if you if they could have put her in a position to maybe do that maybe even be the champion you know maybe she wouldn't have had interest because i i spoke to her like in person i think uh, two, one or two weeks after she left impact and like she mm -hmm. looked, looked very nervous like she I bullshitted with her a little bit. Like it seemed like she made a decision, but she took a chance of betting herself on herself, but she was actually scared what, you know, if she made the right decision, like I, yeah. that's the vibe I got from her, but it's like, right. if they creatively would have fulfilled her, you know, she probably wouldn't have, wouldn't have left. Right. You know? Yeah, no, exactly. Exactly. So I think that, and, and, you know, part of that is because like you said, she was nervous about what hell, what, what was out there for her beyond um and like like i said in a situation like that if you're not going to be used here you're not going to be used there you might as well go make more money and do it in front of more people yeah you might, that's, might that's as well not be used in front her. of more people yeah so, good for her yeah and uh, that's clearly clearly what she did but as you said you can be in that position also where you know my cat knocking my <laughs> you can be in that position also where it's like you know, maybe Jordan Grace did see, okay, I could be more creatively fulfilled here. You know, Moose probably said something very similar. I was actually shocked that Moose returned. Yeah. But I think some people have the the wherewithal to be like, okay, if I go there, how are they going to use me? But uh, yeah, I think that's what you got to ask yourself. I mean, again, unless you are, unless you are like saying to yourself, you know what? I can go to, I'm just throwing out numbers here. If you're saying to yourself, you know what? I can go to WWE and get a three-year deal for $250,000 and then I'll keep myself in great shape and I'll come back to Impact. You know, like, that, to me, that's a calculated thing. And when you come back to Impact in three years, you're going to be a bigger name than you were when you left. So, in my opinion, like, if you, if you decide to make a, a calculated move like that, I can't blame anybody. Right. Like, I like, again, you know, uh, nobody who's telling you to keep it real is going to put money in your pocket. Nobody who's telling you to keep it real is going to put food on your table. Nobody who's telling you to keep it real is going to put, um, you know, money in your bank account. They're not going to put gas in your car. Right. Like, so. Yeah. Um, so keep it real for what? OK, <laughs> like uh, go go get your money. But again, everybody's different. Right. Some people. Cannot function if they don't feel like they have purpose when they get up and go to work every day. And, yeah. and for, for, if you're that type of person, then it is worth your sanity to not, to, 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 to not be working on as big a stage if what you're doing is fulfilling. So, you know, we, and we don't know these people, right. We don't, we don't know like what their inner motivations are. So, um, yeah, yeah. you know, I, I, you know, Jordan Grace has an OnlyFans business, which, you know, I've, 
Uh, I think I've heard her say is doing very well. So, um, so you know, maybe that's not something that she could do in WWE or AEW. Who knows? So, um, you know, I think, I think everybody has their own reasons for wanting to work at, at a particular place. But I think she's doing a great job, like really establishing herself as um, kind of like the constant of this era of the knockouts. You know, um, mm-hmm. I, Deanna Perrazzo has had a great run. I could see Deanna Perrazzo wanting to take her chances in an AEW. I could totally see it. Um, she's a great wrestler. Uh, everyone knows she's a great wrestler. Um, I do think some people, like, doubt her, like, that she's more of a big fish in a small pond. And so I think she would love to go prove those people wrong. And so, mm-hmm. but I, I got to be perfectly honest with you. I just, I think that, again, I think AEW is not great about using female talent. They're not. They're no. not. Like, uh, like uh, again, this character, this timely to- timeless Tony Storm character, I think that's an invention of her own. And um, and because if it wasn't, then why haven't they come up with, with stuff like this for everybody else? You yeah, know. Yeah. And so, like with Diana Perrazzo, she's not like a character person. So I don't, I don't know what I think she's really good friends with Britt Baker, right? Yeah, they're best friends. Them, so them and Chelsea Green are really maybe tight. they'll do something where they put uh, Diana with Britt Baker, and that could be something fun that they do uh, for a while. But um. But other than that, like I said, AEW just does not have a great track record of, of putting together great stories for, for women. No, they don't. Um, and maybe that's maybe that's what's going on going on with Deanna. I think that they're doing a disservice beating her like a drum like they're doing right now. I mean, they had Trinity tap her out like three times, dude. Like everyone's like, Well, she's on her way out the door. She should do the job. Like, yeah, you should put someone over like Jay Cargill did for Chris Statlander. They didn't have Jade Cargo lose five matches in a row and completely undo well, they had everything. A, they had to lose two over. matches in a row. One was like, uh, and they were both kind of squashy. They were both kind of squashy. Yeah. And so, like, so I, I wouldn't say they necessarily did Jade some tremendous honor on the way out the door. But, yeah, but the first loss was not, she wasn't leaving at that time. They were just doing a title change. Yeah. The second one was like, he tried to have some kind of class the way he did it. I mean, I don't know if he did or not, but. They didn't beat her like a drum on the way out, like they're doing with with Deanna. Yeah. Well, I, see, I, I don't. She's not losing. She's had she had a good match with Tasha Stills, a former Knockouts champion. She lost to three times to Trinity, Trinity. right? Like who's she got pinned you know, down for Glory by Killer Kelly. That's a that's a rough one. That's a rough one. like that's a <laughs> that's a rough one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I love. I mean, I'd love. Killer Kelly, trust me, but I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, no. I just think it would have been way more if if um, if if uh, Tasha beat her rather than hey, let's have her lose four times prior to this. Yeah, no, you're right. This is definitely you, you know she's definitely on the she's either on the I'm on the way out track or the I'm about to like have like a I'm losing so I'm going crazy story arc. So it could be either or, you know, yeah. Scott Demore better get to better get to, to doing some negotiations. Do you think that? So I have to imagine at Hard to Kill, there has to be a debut has to be. There's no way that they're going to do all this rebranding and there's not going to be some kind of free agent that that makes a splash. Right. There's not a lot out there. Do you think? The CM Punk or Mercedes Monet's Monet signings are a possible. I, I think neither are a possibility. I, I think <laughs> them two and Will Osprey. I don't see any of the three showing up. That doesn't mean it might not happen. But do you think there is a possibility at all? Uh, possibility, yes. Uh, do I think it will happen? No. I think that people will go. I don't know how. Okay, I think the, the common thought is that uh, TNA cannot afford CM Punk. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true. Um, I think that Anthem has money. I think they just don't give it out for nothing. Um, yeah. And, I mean, if again, if they decided, hey, we're going to take some big swings, those would be two hell of a swings. 
<clears throat> two hell of a swings. If you're like, hey, if you got, if you, if you can, if you can sell out Vegas for one night, and then on that night you debut CM Punk and Mercedes Monet, you might be off to the races. So I, so now this is all wishful thinking. Do I think it'll happen? No, but damn, if they shouldn't be trying, because I think that's a that's the type of um of uh of 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 headline that could really set you off off to the races in terms of like um you know come see this new product with these talents who you know and all these other talents who are also really great. The reason I say they can't afford CM Punk is because if you sign CM Punk, you then have to sign people to wrestle CM Punk. Mm. Like it's one you we saw it with the Good Brothers big money contracts to bring them in and then they had no one to fucking fight hmm. and it wasn't even you know until they were able to bring in bullet club here gorillas of destiny like they're wrestling reno scum they're wrestling fucking uh, i'm trying to think who else who are around at the time it wasn't interesting mm-hmm. and you bring cm punk in okay maybe you have uh, same thing will osprey you might have a couple opponents to give them no one impact they'll feed them those opponents immediately right who the fuck are they going to fight? And then you, you then you have to bring in people. I can't say on that level, but on the level of someone that CM Punk wants to work with, he's not going to wrestle. Um, I'm trying to think of an example of impact. Um, I'm trying to think of someone in the X division. Uh, like I don't know, he's not going to wrestle like Crazy Steve or something like that. You know, like <laughs> it's it, he's he's going to wrestle the two or three dudes at the top of the card, maybe a Mike Bailey here, maybe a Trey Miguel here, and then it's like, what the fuck are you going to do? So, but here's I just the thing, though: when- if if you do it right, that does that can be a year's worth of television. That's the thing, right? Like you don't um you don't bring CM Punk out and have him wrestle every episode of Impact. Which or they if would you do, do. <laughs> you put him in like you put him in some tag team matches, or some triple threat matches, or like a battle royal or a gauntlet. Like you know, what I mean, come up with a plan. Be like, okay, hey, here's what we're gonna do to get us from uh from now till. Uh, let's just plan out through Slammiversary. And let's say the Slammiversary match is going to be CM Punk versus um, versus Trey Miguel, right? Let's just say it. Let's just say that the Slammiversary match is going to be Slam- CM Punk versus Trey Miguel. So what needs to happen is by the time we get to Slammiversary, uh, Trey Miguel needs to feel like a big enough deal to threaten CM Punk. So Trey Miguel is not losing between now and uh and 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 slam anniversary right he's not losing he's going to be beating all these people right you know all these people save for like your world champion bring in a couple of jobbers so we can have some matches you know whatever like do what you got to do and then just you, you do things again cm punk could wrestle a jobber here or there have him cut some promos that's his biggest asset at this point anyway you know let me come out cut some promos um we'll throw you some We'll throw you some uh, some some red herrings. We'll we'll roll out Brian Myers to cut some promos with you, and that'll be something for two weeks. Like you'll talk for you'll talk for two weeks, wrestle him on the third week, beat him, no problem. You know, um, then we'll you know then we'll then we'll switch to you know we got other people. Fucking Zicky Dice will come out. Uh, fucking Joe Hendry. Like you have you know have him work his way along all your. You know your people near the bottom say for like that top have a couple of interactions backstage with josh alexander right and then by the time we get to bound for glory you got cm punk versus josh alexander cm punk should lose right and then it you know but again i think you can do it you just got to use the talent sparingly use him for his name value put him out there put him on promos have him going around promoting the show tna is back this is cool this is going to be different this time I don't ask me about what happened to AEW. We're, you know, like so you, you know, you can you can do that. Do the same thing with um with with Mercedes Monet. Have her come out. Have her cut some promos. Put her in a couple of you know matches. You know, tease her in Trinity. You know, maybe that's your Bound for Glory match. Mercedes versus Trinity. Like you can do it. Just don't. I would I would take the art of the slow build to the big match. That's what I would do. You're right, and everything you make you say makes perfect sense. But they do not have a history of doing that. Like there's Correct. nothing to suggest that they would do that. They, you know, bring in Trinity. She's wrestling for the title immediately. They they actually did it a lot slower than I thought they were going to do. I, th- I think they waited a couple more weeks than I would have done it. 
Um, I think Deanna Peraza won the title her third match her, in Impact. I think it was her. I thought it was her first. I could be wrong. It's probably her third. What, for, third, third, first or yeah, third? Whatever, one of whatever. them. Whatever. Yeah. First set of tapings for sure. Yeah. But that that is the history that they have. Good Brothers are wrestling for the titles immediately. They weren't. There was no. Hey, we're building up to it. Right. Uh, Speedball Mike Bailey lost the match before, after they announced he was wrestling Will Ospreay. He lost on TV. Sorry. <laughs> Mike Bailey lost his match on TV to Jonathan Gresham, who wasn't even on the fucking card. I shouldn't say that. He was in the gauntlet, but, you know, he loses on TV. He wasn't like, okay, he's going to wrestle Will Ospreay, so we, we've got to make him strong. Like, they just don't have a history of that. Right. So everything you're saying makes perfect sense, but that's just never been how they, they've done it. That's right. always how, how I want to see it done. It's just it's just not how it's <laughs> ever yeah. done. No, you're right, man. You're right. You're right. Um, but listen, we are going to have to get this wrapped up. It's been amazing catching up. Uh, I hope you guys out there have all enjoyed this. I'm not doing the clothes. You're doing the clothes. <laughs> you you, uh, you kind of read my mind because we're at that one. Uh, it's 116 right now, but usually we do about 115 when we wrap yeah. up our show. So. It, it yeah. flew by though but it did so we're we're gonna do it again as soon as soon and uh, we're gonna figure out this cool factor thing again my schedule is weird right now because i've been um on active duty for like four mm-hmm. months and then it's like then i go back to my normal job and i don't know what that schedule is it's it's a pain we're gonna yeah. figure it out though yeah for so sure. uh yeah maybe you know we'll, we'll we'll figure it out we'll figure it out guys but again in the meantime, in between time, you can always catch us out here in these social media streets. You can catch me at TW talking about uh you can if you really, if you really, if you really want to hear me, you can go subscribe to the Talking About Podcast. Uh BQ is gonna put a link in the in the uh, description of this video. And so you can uh come and um come come hear what I got to say on a more frequent basis. But you know, catch me in these Twitter streets. Tweet me, I tweet back. I'm always down to have a conversation about impact or all things wrestling or sports or whatever it is you want to talk about. And as always, you can catch me at BQ Speak. So thanks for uh, tuning in. And I'm, I'm going to team up with a couple other podcasters here to talk uh, the TNA rebrand here. But TW had to be first. There was no uh, can't can't have anyone before him. That's that's not going to happen. So uh, yeah. we will catch you guys next time. We're out. Peace. <laughs>